And let's get started. Analog sleeves and what to know. This presentation is about analog sleeves and will explain both the basics and how to properly care for them. The first thing we must cover is the construction of the sleeve. A sleeve begins the inner liner. It can be fiberglass, Kevlar, or similar resin saturated material. The next layer is a compressible bladder. This allows for expansion and contraction of the sleeve for installation and removal on the press manual, mandrel. The next layer is a repeat or sizing. For analogs, these are typically thin, and at this point, the sleeve just looks, looks just like a print sleeve or a plate sleeve in construction. And that's to represent the repeat. The next layer is the aluminum cladding. The aluminum layer is needed for ceramic to adhere to and provide a machinable layer for ceramic removal. Next, seal bond is needed as a barrier coat as well as an adhesion layer. This allows the ceramic to adhere to the surface and create a barrier coat for ink and other chemicals. This barrier is applied in spray. A weld cannot be used in the sleeve construction due to heat dispersion. Then we plasma coat and apply the ceramic. The remainder of the engraving process is handled the same way as any analog roll base. This is a great picture of cross-sectional view of the sleeve layers. When the term composite is used, it is due to the meaning of multiple layers of different materials. And that's what, if we were to take an analog sleeve and cut it down, that's the different layers that are gonna be in the construction of your sleeve. Now the next thing we're gonna talk about is this inner sleeve diameter. The inner sleeve diameter of the analogs is important as any ingredient spec specification due to the fit tolerance. There are a few important things to know about the inner sleeve diameter. Looking at the sleeve itself, the diameter is actually smaller than the outside diameter of the press mandrel. This is so it will grip the mandrel instead of free wheel. Sometimes when mandrels are worn, you will see an analog spin with the air off. Air is used to expand the inner layers and allow the sleeve to float. This is a clearance fit. When the air is off, is an interference fit. If you see someone beating on the sleeve to remove it, there is an air or ink on the mandrel issue and it should be addressed. Mandrels have holes for traveling of air during mounting and the dismounting process of the sleeves. Air holes that get plugged with ink or other debris will not allow the air to flow. They must be kept clean or a sleeve can get stuck on the mandrel. Use a paper clip and insert into these holes. Some mandrels have a Miller valve as an option for these holes. These stop the airflow when not compressed by the sleeve, allowing more air to the holes where the sleeve is. And the pictures in the slide are a good example of a Miller valve. Air pressure and airflow play a critical role on how well this whole process functions. Sleeves are typically made to a 90 PSI standard. When air is too low, it can cause installation and removal issues and sleeve damage when the air is too high. Airflow must be adequate and is typically handled with a compressor, primary reservoir, and secondary reservoir system to keep the air availability balanced. If you have a compressor constantly running, the demand is too great and you'll need to reduce the load or get a bigger compressor. Sleeve's outer diameter is also an important specification. It is also known as a finished diameter. Diameters outside the specs of the OEM will cause slurring as the analogs will be moving at a different rate than the plate surface at the point of contact. Some of the other specs that are also important are the face length, the weight, and the balance specifications. Face length, sometimes we get sleeves where a sling guard 
cuts the sleeve down and shortens them. If you have a sleeve coming up short to the others, start looking at your sling guards as the problem. Weight. Weight is important to mobility and press function and the weight of the sleeves are typically dictated by the OEM specification. Material substitutions can address the same issues. And we have here is an example of the balance specifications. OEMs also have balance specs that are based on the RPM for dynamic balancing. This keeps the vibration to a minimum. Sleeves must be treated carefully. Pressure is applied to the sleeve from an enclosed doctor chamber. Overloading the chamber for long periods of time can damage the cushion layer. If the analogs is not turning and puts pressure on one of the areas of the cushion layer, this can cause damage. Can, this can damage the cushion layer as well. It would be the same as laying a rubber roller in a flat area. It would get a flat spot. So if you can tell on the slide, when the pressure of the doctor chamber is applied to one area only and it's not being used, you can actually squash the inner layers and cause a TIR issue where one side of the analog sleeve has a smashed inner layer and the outside is pushed over. Sleeves are lighter and it is easy to get careless when moving or resting them. Do not let the engraved surface touch anything. It will damage the cells. Here's a great example of just placing a analog sleeve on top of a, a, maybe a cart, a wooden cart or a wooden desk. Anytime you have any, as we know, anytime with any contact with the analog cells, you can potentially damage them, causing print issues. Never load a sleeve on concrete. It is too easy to chip or knock a sleeve out of round by banging them on a hard surface like this. You don't want to stand them on the ends. Sometimes when you're trying to move things quickly, set a roll down real quick to set a sleeve down real quick to change it out, and we have to pay mind to where we're putting it. Examples of actually place a sleeve rack to mandrel and then mandrel to rack sleeve rack process with nothing in between. If you need to move sleeves in bulk, use a mobile cart. If you don't plan this out and execute, people will come up with their own ideas on how to transport sleeves. That's never a great idea to move around the sleeve on your This is an example of a roll cart. Standing vertical so that they don't hang, rubber stops on the bottom side of the, of the sleeve so that it doesn't bang on the metal frame of the cart, and post to come down to help support the sleeve on the inside. So this is a great example what Harper recommend to transport your sleeves from the rack to press mandrel and from press mandrel back to your rack. Now we're gonna talk about some of the damages from press components. Some of the major culprit, culprits in the sleeve damages are dirty sling guards, drip pans, and the evaporative covers. Sometimes it's hard to see if there's clearance, but make sure there is. All these items end up a machine tools that get cut up and damaged sleeves. So as we have an example here of a sling guard, and what happens is it'll cut down and chip the edges of the roll, like in the top right hand picture. And the bottom side is another drip pan that can also cause issues as well. Here are two great examples of damage. On the left, you can see tiny blisters from a chemical attack. We use a product called Seal Bond to act as a corrosion, corrosion barrier. In some cases, we have to customize protection because of the harshness of the chemical being printed. You can see on the right sleeve how the sleeve must have been dropped. Ceramic is shattered, but you can also see that there's a flat spot on the end and it is no longer round. The sleeve is now trash.
The sleeve section of the upper right is an extreme example of ink inside the analog sleeve. The ink creates more interference and will keep sleeves from going on and off the mandrels. The bottom line is, is an example of the analogs for white ink. You can see how the buildup is affecting the inner liner by contaminating it. Once this happens, the sleeve starts to separate and cannot be reused. How do we clean the insides of the analog sleeves? One solution for inner liner cleaning is its board brush. It is the one solution that we found that is both effective and efficient. So we have a sample of the board brush here. What we do is we add a little bit of cleaner to the brush, slide them in and out of the both sides of the sleeve so that you can remove any debris or any type of ink that happens to build up during the run. Again, this will allow ink to set on the mandrel and cause a sleeve to be stuck and not be able to come on and off the press without damaging it. Another example of inner liner damage on this slide is the scratch that you can see. The inner liner keeps air from the soft layers of the sleeve. Scratches on the inner liner can compromise it, and when the air makes it through, it can split the interior of the sleeve. This is known as air subduction. As a quick reminder, pay heed to OEM specifications and make sure you have the correct air pressure and airflow. Additions of equipment that have pneumatics will greatly increase the demand. So does the distance. When we mention this again, because we see it in many shops. So anytime you have any type of equipment that is pneumatic, uh, could be a turnbar or anything of that nature, it draws air from the press. You want to make sure you're still getting enough air pressure into the mandrels so that you're able to not have any low air pressure on your mandrel and then cause issues with the sleeves. Here's another example of a storage cart. And for storage, you always try to go vertical with the sleeves. They're strong in that direction and they do not go out around that way. If you must store vertically, make sure the sleeve rack stems fill the sleeve IDs to help support the sleeve weight. Make sure the stems are longer and the inner diameter touches the whole sleeve length. If you have questions about how to store them, you can always do a quick press room audit and point out what you need to do to get better results when protecting the sleeves. One of the things that we always like to press when we're talking about a press room audit, we come in and we talk about your storage and your travel capacity. If you can see on the bottom of the sleeves, on the bottom layer, those are roll covers. Roll covers are a great product to use on your sleeves. Not only do they, do they protect your sleeve from getting any type of dust buildup or any type of material falling on them, but if something does happen where somebody's resting a tool on the top level and the tool falls down, it won't scratch and damage the engravings. They actually protect them from any type of materials or tooling that falls off the top. So roll covers are always a great thing. I like to see those a lot on the sleeves when I go into a shop and take a look. So we want to keep in mind, not only is a great cart and the travel rack, but you want to protect the engravings by adding a roll cover. And that's what I have for my presentation on roll sleeves. I'd like to Thanks, thank Rick. you. Oh, go ahead, Richard, I'm sorry. No, no, that was it. I just wanted to thank everybody for